Joining me today are actor and writer Georgia Maguire. Hello. Comedian Adam Hess. <laughs> Hello. All right. And author Andrew Hunter Murray. Hello. Hello. Uh, Andrew, on the topic of you being an author, you have just had a book out, right? Yes. Super fan. Yeah. <laughs> My mum is the super fan. And I actually do have a copy of your book. It's called The Last Day. She wanted me to sign it. She, well, she didn't want me to sign it. That would be pretty anticlimactic. <laughs> but she, she wanted you to sign it for her. This is the first one um, I've signed in the wild. This is so exciting. Know, well, oh. If anyone else wants anything else mentioned, you, you can do it. But you do also need to sign it for my mum. Is, was your mum excited about meeting either of us? Or are you going to... I mean, I feel... Yeah. <laughs> Right, right, I'm so, so much. flattered about yeah, that. Thank you very much. That's the yeah. last day. Thanks very much That's for, so for nice. signing that for my mum. Oh. Oh. Um, okay, so back to Adam's the actual... Adam's really angry here. I know, he's so annoyed. <laughs> I, just, I, just wish I, had a book. I just wish I had a book now. <laughs> <laughs> I want book envy. Everyone wishes they had a book, yeah. but Andrew's the only one who's stepped up and actually done it. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are uh, talking about the topic, feel good sports movies for ages 8 to 10. This is a real category on Netflix. Now, before we come up with our own ideas, let's look at what already exists in that category. There are three entries at time of recording. Uh, one is an Indonesian film about football. The second is a sequel to that Indonesian film about football. And the third and final one was your homework to watch, which was the Australian football film Back of the Net. Mm. Courtesy of Wikipedia, this is how they describe it. <laughs> Back of the Net follows American teenager Corey Bailey, who, hens, who ends up at Harold Soccer Academy after catching the wrong bus. <laughs> she then completes a semester at the soccer school. Yeah. And that, I think, is a fair and accurate description of what <laughs> happens. Well, yeah. Wikipedia is smashing yeah. there. This is a film that is so uh, new, I would say. It doesn't. When you look on IMDb for the trivia, there is none. No trivia was created or smelted or mined in the not, making of this is film. Is that because of the age of the film or just the level of interestingness? Oh, because they all had such an awful time while they were making yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It was an. Uh, it was. You, it did exactly what it said on the tin, and not only that, you could have predicted the entire plot based on, I'm going to say, a thumbnail of the, of the film. I'm going to say there's no trivia because it actually deals with some very serious themes. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, like. well, you know, like what happens when you really like chemistry yeah. and you end up at a, a... She ends up in this summer school in Australia which seems to teach only football and chemistry. There is a chemistry <laughs> element, yeah. which is really nice. So she's this science-mad kid who... Um, there's a very funny bit of business with a bus and she ends up in the, in the wrong place. We never see the alternative film of yeah. the kid who's meant to be going to a football academy... And ends up on yeah. a chemistry uh, school. No, well, she's meant to be going, being Incredible on a boat. Incredible. She's meant to be going she on a boat. Swimming with orcas and dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> so it, the, the film starts with the, the age old problem of when you put two almost identical things next to each other with um, dangerously different contents. So you know yeah. when you put your sleeping pills next to your diarrhea pills? Yeah. yeah. And your glasses have fallen off, <laughs> and then you just shit yourself in your sleep or something. Whereas you actually wanted to do the opposite. Oh no, you shit yourself when you're very awake. That's yeah, what happens. Yeah. Um, so there was a science bus and a soccer bus yeah. next to each yeah. other. And despite there being children on these buses, they didn't really check who these kids were, check who anyone was, and the kid <laughs> went uh, went to the wrong went to the wrong place. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and she didn't she didn't fit in, so she had to become good at football. The message is really conform, conform to those around you. <laughs> Yeah, and it's right. a message I wish I'd learned at school because I did not get into football. It, it, it was, disguise your passion as, <laughs> as something. You know, speak in terms of other people's interests. So yeah. She wanted to talk about science, but she had to disguise it with all these words like yeah. ball. And <laughs> how did she cope? So basically, she yeah. So she says like basically, we will win the soccer if you in, if you include this bit of science. What's the science mm. called? Oh, I think it's the Magnus effect. The Magnus possibly. effect. Yeah. Which is about how a ball can spin in the air. I fell asleep. So that very that at all. Stuff. So that's how it's all about how the ball can curve. Yeah, no, and bend I genuinely like was asleep. So, it, it was so funny though because it was like, oh, with science we can win. But at no point during any of the matches that they do win with the science does the ball even leave the ground. I find it so weird about these films where, and it's often Amer American soccer films where they. Uh, they think, well, no, no, no. These people, these kids, are, these people are terrible at playing football. But mm. no one will no notice. It's not the point of the film. It's like it takes you out of it so much. It's like if there was a film about the world's tallest man, and the actor they hire is four for eight. <laughs> It's like, yeah, you just suspend your disbelief. And it's like, no, but this is this is ridiculous now. Like, oh, look, this guy's the best soccer player in class. <laughs> and then he's just like getting sick on himself. <laughs> so you, but you might like football. Do you like football? Adam? No. Oh, OK. Because I really, really, do. I didn't notice that. But that's, I assumed it's because I really, really don't. Oh, I'm not into it at all. So what did everyone think of it in terms of quality? And what do you reckon the public consensus was on its quality? 
I mean, I thought it was really difficult to watch. Yeah. I think that Edie had psychological problems, you know, the um, evil yeah. woman. Or oh, the bully. The bully. Mm. I mean, it was painful. It was. She was very mean. And it came from a sad place. It's <laughs> really from a sad dark. place. We got an insight into why. Because yeah. she was the child of this bully character, the child of famous actors, famous Australian actors. And you see this phone call where she's trying to persuade them to to stop production on what they're working on and come and see her football match. And at that point, the um, the production nerd in me thought, well, that that would be insane. You'd have to lay off a lot of people. And she goes, this, spoiler alert, this child goes on to lose the match she's playing in. And yeah. so imagine if they'd laid off, they'd stop production on the movie. Yes. They've come down to see the denouement. In answer to your question, Rory, in ages yeah. eight to 10, do we think people will have liked it? Yeah. I think they will. I think we'll have gone down well. Yeah. That we'll have gone down do, well. At any age, when you're 8 to 10, do you engage <laughs> enough with anything to actually like something? Like, I don't remember <laughs> leaving. I think, I think the jury's out. I think no one knows. What a, uh, yeah, no one knows. What a bleak you childhood the, you had, When Adam. you're nine, did you ever leave yeah. the cinema and turn to your mum and go, ah, a bit weak around the beginning act? You didn't oh, say the that. critical faculties, they're not home. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, you just, was it? But you haven't written a novel, have you? So as, let's no, remember not, that. I've, well, wow. <laughs> I've not had a novel published. I've written, I've sent a lot of things to publishers. Um, you can send like your rejection email to me. I'll get it, sign it, and I'll give it to my yeah. mum. I, be, I, I guess I bet an eight to ten year old. The way they work out if the film's good is do the team win, and the team do win, which is all the kid wants. Surely, yeah, yeah. I'm an age where I want death and loss to just feel anything now well yeah assuming that kids did like it adults did not like it only oh. only, only 50 percent, and it's classified as rotten on rotten tomatoes oh. uh i'll just read one quick review but again mm. there are half positive reviews but the negative ones are funnier um <laughs> uh, one review here from alex lines at film inquiry uh, it's ironic that back of the net features a protagonist who operates life through the application of textbook formulas Ooh. because she's stuck in a film that has chosen to do the same yeah yeah, yeah. jolly yeah, I know. That's a brilliantly written review. <laughs> I know, right? So anyway, that's the critical consensus. Can we come up with ideas that the 8 to 10s will like and maybe Alex Lines will also like? We can only dream. Georgia. Oh, no. What is your idea? Okay, so if I was 8 to 10, I think I would have wanted to feel included in a genre that I, at school, I did not feel included in sport. Mm. I was very bad, never chosen for any teams. Um, not even the fun race at sports day. The fun race? Yeah. And More? I do... well, what's the fun race, sorry? Well, it's when you change costumes and use an egg and spoon. Oh, and yeah. I wasn't included. That does sound very that, fun. It, what? What a <laughs> laugh. Um, so I've decided that my um, film will be called Off Games. Okay. Great. And it's for the underdogs in the sporting world. Um, so it's a group who don't like Sports Day and are never included in Sports Day. Um, and they, you know, are always on the side bench at school being like laughed at by the cool kids. So what they decide to do is um, during Sports Day, they just walk out of school. They just decide, you know what, we've had enough. No one's going to even notice that we're not yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. And they find themselves enjoying the walking experience. Oh, this is great. This so is they're, great. you know, enjoying moving their bodies <laughs> and their limbs, but in a way that's not prescribed by the institution, oh, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so they really enjoy it. And they just, they keep on walking and walking and walking. Oh, there you go. Kind of a bit Forrest Gumpy. Yeah. Um, and they walk <laughs> and they just don't stop. Um, can, can they stop? Well, exactly. They're enjoying it so much and they've discovered their love of physical activity, but in mm. their own way, mm. right. you know, right. like by their own rules. Um, and they eventually end up walking around the world. <laughs> wow. Um, and they get these all these followers who meet them yeah. in different places. Um, and um, I thought that in terms of casting, so you know how, for example, Oliver in this looked 45? Yeah. Um, I thought that what they could do, that actors could grow into their actual ages. Mm. So we could Ooh. use people, you know, for example, who um, say that their casting is 16 to 30, not talking about anyone in this <laughs> room, but I checked on my CV and that is what my, yeah, what it says. 16. So they grow, I know, ridiculous. So they grow into their age and by the end, they're, you know, 26 or whatever. Right. And they they go back into their PE lesson to rapturous applause. They, sorry, but oh, is right. the sports I mean, day still going on when they come back? They can walk into another sports <laughs> right. day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we've heard later. about you. Uh, if you're not here with kids, you can't come in. You like <laughs> only parents. <laughs> They're all yeah. bearded, sweaty, <laughs> covered in blood. 
Wow. And stuff happens on the walk. Surely. Yeah, yeah. Like they all chat. They oh, like, great. Oh, they chat. <laughs> oh, great. We got the dialogue. Sorry. <laughs> Are they in contact with the families at any point? Yeah, the or? families aren't worried. Okay. To, because they they have their cell phones. Um, and because so, they're not, they want to get rid of the kids because they're. Failures? Because they're nerds. Yeah, they're failures. Because in they the genre, nerds no, are no welcome. No Never value. prosper. Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> they wither and die normally, whereas yeah. in this film, they carry on walking. And so I, so, th <laughs> and it's just walking. So it's just, just, so no other, like, it's not like they get a taste for exercise and then they escalate to, yeah. they walk they're, they're, to the World Cup. They, they never, and, br they never and break they, into a jog. No. I don't think I mean they I could, like this no yeah but I think they stick yeah. to their guns yeah. because for so long they've been yeah. made to do fucking javelin and they hate it <laughs> and you know what's great about this is when you watch a sort of a, a film that's meant to motivate you and be like yeah I can do anything I want mm. it's like nah because he climbed Everest I can't do that that's not my vote to me for shit it makes mm. me feel shit but I might be able to go for a little stroll exactly so that's like yeah mm. I can do something with my life so this is for you. This is for this me. This is for me. Is it for you? I think it's for me. Yeah, great. Mm. Is it for you? Or You're a job. Not, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if we are, if this is about a group of kids, it sounds like this relate, like you know, kind of jives with all of you. Why doesn't everyone come up with one character in the group? So, Georgia, give us one of our kids slash adults who's in this group. Okay, so Marina. Oh yeah. Um, Marina has always been made to swim. Oh. Um. Well, that's <laughs> dark. <laughs> Being thrown in lakes. We gave it this name for a reason. <laughs> because her family are champion swimmers. Yeah. So she's coming for, come from this oh, long, mm. long line of Olympic swimmers. And unfortunately, Marina just doesn't have the webbed feet that her family all seem to have. What a name, Marina. <laughs> yeah. oh, Great choice. Well done. Exactly, exactly. And they've really, she wears that burden heavy. And actually, she just really loves geography. Right. So, which is why which the is marina, so yeah. exactly in the group. So she's the navigator. Right. She's the go. one that can Here read the map. She's got the compass, and she is able to take them in the on the right. And roads. there's someone who's nerdy because they just wanted to forage their whole life. Mm. So they get their little oh. berries, and uh, he's not very good at it. He's a kid, and they'll get very ill. Yeah, but um, <laughs> the, that. But yes, one one of their downfalls in the real world is actually uh, pro. What's the opposite of downfall? Upfall. One yeah. of the good things <laughs> yeah. is that, yeah, so anything that made, they were made fun of, they're now smashing it. So we got, you got what? Navigating, foraging, and uh, maybe one of the characters could be... Well, this is your character then. Could be, yeah. sorry. Um, a kid who's obsessed with the priesthood, <laughs> but is a bit embarrassed. Right. So he, he, he tries to be cool. He doesn't like to talk about it, but like, he doesn't say that's why he makes certain decisions, mm. but he's... Deeply, deeply upset. Oh, guys, come on, chill out. How about you just like... Um, I was about to do a Bible quote and realised I don't know any. But something like that. And he wears little priest stuff underneath yeah. his normal clothes. And uh, and he's everyone's like moral compass, mm. in a way. There we so go. Got, that's very nice. Real <laughs> compass, moral compass. Yeah. I feel like it's not a third kind of compass <laughs> yeah, for the yeah, character. Okay, so, yeah, really so struggling uh, uh, Andrew, what is your John's third, compass. your third <laughs> compass-wielding <laughs> character? Well, I, th I just... Wanted to pick up on the thing you said, Georgia, about them being, um, they attract a lot of attention as they go around the world. Obviously, they would. A group mm. of children who are on a kind of pilgrimage, in a way, following much. the priest yeah. character, Thank they're going to need much. a substantial PR representation. <laughs> so I suppose one of the children would, would be a child who was always hoping to get into PR, but, <laughs> <laughs> but was, was never allowed to do it at school. <laughs> because it's not a subject, really. <laughs> Hello again, just interrupting for a second to let you know that you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook by searching for You Watched Pod, where you'll find additional content, podcast news and exciting updates on my quest for the next big thing. That's You Watched Pod on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. All right, so I've got I've got an idea. It's called it's called Try Hard. Oh, yeah. And it's about a boy. He's so clever. I can't believe it. It's so clever that what, it's almost... What grades are you getting? It's so good that it's... I mean, this is the twist. This oh, is, We've got a twist already. So this kid is so clever that he, in his maths exam, he was, he's the cleverest kid in uh, the whole town. Oh, and, town. Yeah. and the whole borough. <laughs> cleverest kid in the borough. Oh, wow. So clever... Um, that he is gonna, his the university he's gonna go to is maths high, Ooh. and he's very excited about going to maths high. Mm. He's so clever, he's definitely going to maths high. Um, but he was so good in his maths A level yeah. that no one understood the answers. He got everything so good, he did the math so well that even the person marking it was like, right. 
I can't understand it. The, un- the numbers were too high. So <laughs> I've never seen such numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what it is. 100 is the highest number. I don't know what is this one. And so the guy marking it was like, I've done on it, so he's give a big old, big old orange zero. And so he didn't get into maths high. Oh, no. And he Dang. got had to go through clearing. And the only... <laughs> how how far school. are we into the movie at clearing? This is like the first like, bit of dialogue, the first sentence. Okay, right, All of this yeah. is coming in the first sentence. <laughs> Got it. And, uh, and the only space left in the entire borough yes. to go... It's all very borough-based bur- cinema. It's very borough-based. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the only place and the only course left, in enti- actually in the entire world, actually, mm. global market, um, is to a uh, place doing a degree uh, doing rugby at Oxford University. <gasps> and he was like, oh, no. No, I sh- oh, gosh. And he's like, I can't do r- rugby. I'm only maths. So he turns up and everyone's like, you're too nerd. You're too nerd mm. to do this. <laughs> and this is awful for you. And he who does. Says, who says that? What, what's the character who says you're too nerd? Bragg is his first name. Typical. Bragg leg. Because he's got the longest. Yeah, so he's, he does. He's he got the longest, longest leg. He and he brags about it. He does that. All, every morning he brags yeah. about it. And is he a rugby kid? Bragg, Conveniently, because he's got the longest leg. <laughs> He kicks at the furthest. Right. So he's, yeah. Is he also doing rugby at, at Oxford? Absolutely. So it's at- two kids from the same borough. No, no, no. He, no, he, he, he goes to Oxford oh, to do rugby sorry, and means- Bragg Lake is there. Got it. Right. Is there. That makes sense. So we've broken out of the borough now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very okay. borough yeah. based yeah. in the yeah, intro. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the big bright lights of Oxford. And um, everyone's like throwing stuff at him and being. Hope for its lights. Hope for its lights. It was in the day. Sorry, it was, yeah. it was daytime. And uh, everyone's throwing stuff at him and saying, You're too nerd to do this. Hey, <laughs> hey, why don't you go and count? Uh, and then he says, <laughs> What's his name? Oh, he's got a name. And um, so what happens is he he's like, He's about to do the first like match. Mm. Or is it like any, and he, he has practice and he's mm. bad in the practice. He's mm. like, Oh, bother. And. Uh, and he's so embarrassed. He's like, oh, this is rubbish. But then he remembers he's got a twin brother <laughs> who's exceptional at rugby. Exceptional. Yeah. Yeah. He's very confident. He's very cool. Everyone finds him nice. Mm. And it's just and like, and so he just turns up. So it's played by the same actor. Yeah. And you just see that he's just like the, the what he could have been if he was like, like was like mm. more like rugby-ish and like a cool guy. And then all of a sudden everyone starts to love him. So he does his, uh, so basically every time there's a, a match, the brother called John. Yeah. Um, okay. is what's, one what's, what's, what's the original character called? So we've got John. You're going to hate, you're going to kick me for this. It, is, it's, is John. It John. it's John as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and I know I could have changed that, but then, that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. Uh, no, it's not John. Uh, Billy. Let's call him Billy. Okay. The, the original one's called mm. Billy. And uh, they get to the finals. They get to the final. The twin brother, um, very vain guy, has rubbed so much moisturizer <laughs> into his face. Yeah. <laughs> That he can't leave his bedroom because his his head's too big. So it, it, it affects thousands of men every year. So it's up to uh, Billy, the nerd, to mm. do the rugby, and he actually does all right. Oh yeah, and he's doing okay. Yeah. He's not not quite going to win. But then uh, he basically works out with some clues <laughs> that he he's insane. His brother never existed. Oh my god! It goodness. was all in his head. Just just be confident. And he remembers, you just got to be confident in life and you can do anything you want. They win the match and he goes to hospital. (laughs) <laughs> Wait, so he's got the he's got the big head the whole time. No, no, that was, well, then he said that was in his imagination. Oh, right. it's like, right. Presumably for psychiatric okay. care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he has to go to hospital yeah. to just sort out. There is no brother, and he's just like going, "Oh, yeah, there's never John. There's a John, the big skull." And he's just like, "Where's my brother? Where's my brother?" He's like, "There's no brother. We've told yeah. you, there's no brother." <laughs> now fine I understand your John Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're you're fine at rugby, yeah. man. You're fine. You're fine. He's like one of the best rugby players the world has ever seen, and he's just like he's just so he's not doing too great. And uh, and so he just goes to hospital and he's fine yeah. and then uh, then he um, yeah he comes out and he's uh, he's doing all right now. That's he's post doing... post credits, isn't it? Him coming out of hospital. Uh, we did this is the first scene. Oh, so and then. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, it's not like that. It's not like, yeah. like that. That's really. I've never. I don't think I've seen a film which is a psychological thriller, <laughs> but which keeps that back for the first eighty minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you, you've got to keep it back. It's right. And, it's, yeah. and then, but then you realise. <laughs> <laughs> the clues were there the whole time. Yeah. Like, cause like, if you actually watch it for a second time, you see that there's constantly mm. like, like Sign doctors posts. and policemen <laughs> in every scene saying, you, "Stop it! There's no brother." Like, constantly. if there's any threat and horror. 
whether it's Doctors with Needles or, or whatever it is, it can't be too prolonged or intense, but fantasy settings and comedy may be mitigating factors. Mm-hmm. So, so if it's really scary, but then someone falls over into a pie... Oh, that's, fine. Fine. that's very interesting. Ah. So keep that in your back pocket. Who, right. do, we th- who do we think could play Brag Leg? Brag Leg. Um, Arnie Hammer? <laughs> oh, man. Imagine if you were a, a teen and you went yeah. to Oxford University to play rugby and Arnie Hammer starts having a go oh at you. Oh, my yeah. gosh. <laughs> that's intimidating. And, and what about Billy slash John? Uh, Johnny Wilkinson? Uh, famous rugby Yeah, uh, absolutely. Player. Yeah. And, so uh, he's playing what age? The, they'll knock a few years off in post, uh, won't they? Yeah. <laughs> Good news, uh, again, bad news, he's 40, so a bit old. But good news is his career apparently ends in 2014, so he's free. Oh, great. Right. We'll probably get him in. Yeah, he's, yeah. I uh, shall I get on the blower to his agent after this? 100%. And also, it defeats the problem of uh, having people who are good at acting and bad at sport. Exactly what we were talking about earlier. He'll yeah. be really good at the rugby. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah I'm yeah. watching that nice. film. I'm watching that film. Andrew, what is your idea for feel-good sports movies for ages eight to ten? Okay, uh, this is it's it's in the in the same kind of rich tradition of children who think they can't do something. It turns out they can do it, and it's 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 a sporting one as well. Um, I've I've slightly moved around the the sports here. So this is uh, Zane is our main character. Oh. Now Zane is uh, he's twelve years old because uh, twelve to fourteen because I think it's good for the the eight to ten yep. to have you know you sort of look up to people. Mm. Um, Zane is unbelievably good at boxing. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is really good at boxing. He has, however, at his school, he's been banned from boxing uh, due to uh, a possibly violent incident in his oh, past. Zane. But due to a curious quirk in the rules, Zane is not banned from chess boxing. <laughs> now, <laughs> chess boxing is, of course, the sport where you play chess for about two minutes, don't you? And then yep. you get up and have a, a boxing round for 90 yeah. seconds. Yep. So it, it's a, it's one of those sports that really rewards the all-rounder. You know, yes. you have to have the intellect to stay in the chess game, but you have to have the muscle not to get clobbered on the canvas. So <laughs> so Zane is allowed to enter the, uh, the all-state chess boxing tournament. And he's got a motivation to do so as well. Zane's father is in prison. Okay. Hey, I don't know how we can do this within the 8 to 10 thing. Well, let me know and I'll, say, I'll, I'll try and work, my, work around it. Well, he killed a police informant, right? That's okay. the, <laughs> now, we're going to need a lot of fantasy or comedy to yeah. kind of leaven this loaf. Um, <laughs> but, and we, we also know that he definitely did it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I will say one, one other mitigating factor is yeah. history. So we can just set, make a period piece, maybe, and get away with it. Okay, in fact, if this is in the 19th century, it makes a lot more sense okay, as a film, due to the fact that this child is boxing. Um, okay, so Zane's father is... His, but, and Zane is desperate to get his father out of Chokey, you know, and he knows the best <laughs> lawyer in town is going to charge $150,000 for his time oh, taking wow. on the case. Whoa. There's no way he can do that, except, guess what? Go guess on. what? Guess what the prize money is? Guess what the pot is for the all state? Forty thousand. It's well, it's one hundred fifty thousand. Oh, okay. Actually, oh. yeah. All this, all Zane has to do is learn how to play chess. Brilliant. And so, you know, we've got an antagonist. We've got the the beefy Russian. He's got access to steroids as well, but he's also got access to the mental training. Yeah. Yeah. To have drugs featured. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Drug misuse must be innocuous or carry a suitable anti-drug message. So if every time he shoots up on steroids, someone must oh. go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, I think yeah. I think we I think I can safely say that there will be an anti-drugs message in okay, the film because good, guess who good. comes out on top? It's not it's not the beefy Piotta. It's going to be Zane. Um, oh, great! And he triumphs crucially not in the boxing component, although there are a lot of very full-on boxing scenes. But he triumphs in the chess, and that's the thing. the The film actually ends with him. Um, he visits his father several times in prison. As the film goes on, he realizes his father definitely did commit this crime, and at the end of it. He wins the hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and there's a moment where he weighs up. What should I do with it? He decides not to spend it on oh, freeing his oh his father, who yeah. has been a negative influence on him. He's the one yeah. who got him into um, into boxing in the first place, and he decides to spend it all on setting up a, a fund for underprivileged children to learn chess. Oh, oh beautiful. lovely, beautiful. The film is called. This is just a working title. Yep. The film is hopefully going to be called A Bunch of Squares. <laughs> <laughs> Great. How does he get so good at chess? Right. Well, um, there'll have to be a tutor of some kind. That's mm. not. I haven't fully fleshed that out I yet. Can, uh, he's not. He's not self-taught. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I don't want to do. Is a mis- the tutor going to be an adult, or is it going to be another kid? Well, he starts off by teaching himself, but then I think it should be the uh, the female counterpart to Piotr, the Russian. <gasps> she's his chess. She's. 
Piotr's uh, teacher, yeah. and she realizes, you know what? There's this, this Piotr kid. He's no good. He's on steroids. He anti -dr is. see anti drug yeah. message for you there. Yeah, she yeah. gives up on him because of the steroids. Yeah, and like, she decides to before the crucial final match, she decides to uh, to give Zane the the benefit of her expertise. She's one of Russia's j junior grandmasters, so there's okay. a kind of potential for sparks to fly there. Oh, great. Nice. Yeah. A bit of romance. A bit of romance. Yeah, and yeah. And in exactly. the Cold War. Ends, doesn't exactly. It? The I film is set in 1990. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's your historical element. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. You get away with a lot of things. And, then he, and he takes the king mm. and then he gets it. He goes, you know what I think of this? And he throws it, Berlin Wall. It hits the Berlin Wall, falls down. <laughs> Brilliant. That yes. is it. I think yeah. that could be it. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. This is great stuff. Who are we thinking to play? Mm. First of all, Piotr. Yeah. Hulk Hogan. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. really massive tanned human yeah. unit. Yeah. I Just think, throwing him in I there. I think he needs um, a scar across the entire body, top to bottom, <laughs> to show he's not just been in a little incident. Right. It was, yeah. it's the whole. Or maybe a spiral of a scar that was like like it's like a tangerine. Like someone's trying to peel I've, him. I've got yeah. great news for you, Adam. Nudity is allowed as long as it's not sexualized. So we oh, can. So we really? can. Really? I mean, I'm guessing. I'm guessing not the full package. I think it's threatening. I, I'm, ge I'm guessing obscured in some way, but. <laughs> yeah, but Adam's only interested if it's really threatening. <laughs> yeah, just like just a real like sort of a scar that suggests like what happened. Maybe like mm. a scar, like a like a a bishop. Like a uh, chess piece, like oh, in his yeah. face, as if someone pinned him down and branded him. Oh, this is in, in the, the really intense Russian chess school, yes. yeah, which where they like brand him that. with the chess Absolutely, piece. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, if I yeah. had a big scar like that, I'd get a zip tattooed down it. Oh, yes. So that, you know, it looks like you can just open the scar whenever you That's want. That's what you want, yeah. yeah. So That's very good. So we need to cast someone. Yeah. But does he have the. Well, you need someone with the intellectual heft, though, to play someone who's convincingly a chess grandmaster. Mm. I think Hogan has got that. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. I'd say this is also one of those examples of someone where you need someone who's actually good at chess or they won't believe it do you think actually if you watch an actor play if you're an actual chess expert mm. you can see if someone's good at chess yeah, are you seeing the moves they're making no 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 they, the, the moves are correct that you're just but the way they're doing it there's there's a, a quote here that i don't have the full context for which just says hulk hogan is the greatest chess player say sting <laughs> 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 I, I don't have uh, I don't have many other sources I'll for this. I'll take that on trust. I like but, it. Um, so presumably, again, not Sting the singer. There's a wrestler called Sting. Oh, presumably sorry. Him. Oh. Uh, oh, it'd got... be weird for Sting to weigh in on Hulk Hogan's chessability. I was thinking, I'll be watching you. Yeah. No, yes. I, I, was, I was just thinking, well, you would say that about Hulk Hogan, because he'll yeah. smash you up. I've got a, I found a website here, chess.com, which seems to record Hulk Hogan's chess history. <laughs> this is so but, funny. This um, I mean, I think he has there. to be the chess box. Yeah. He, oh, he's the Mr. Miyagi. Figure. Yeah, yeah. He's the mentor. Great. Who's going to play the 12 to 14 year old who's going to star alongside 66 year old Hulk Hogan? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know any actors of this age though, so that's the tricky thing. Well, so we're going well, to have to go. Pick a bit... anyone you want. Oh, I love this trope. De aging anyone. Well, yeah. great. Yeah. You can de age anyone. It's now. great. Yeah, it just doesn't matter. Oh, who should we de age for the main? Got to have a sort of charm, vulnerability. But big, big arms as well. Oh yeah, I forgot oh, about yeah. that. For the boxing, yeah, yeah. don't forget this kid. I, is I can it... embiggen the arms as well if you want. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't worry about it. Oh, that would be good. What about the child from Jerry Maguire, but just with massive Ooh, arms? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Great. There's a picture of him where he looks like he's actually quite buff already. Oh, he did get buffed. Didn't yeah, he? he's already a buff boy. Oh really? Yeah. yeah so um, that'll save so valuable gym time. That saves a lot of CGI. <laughs> yeah. To recap these ideas, we've got George's idea, which is Off Games, which is a movie about a bunch of underdogs, kids who are never included in sports day, they decide to just walk out of a school. They just walk, and they walk, and they walk, and they keep walking. They can't stop walking, but they love the walking. Mm. They walk all around the world. They meet loads of different people. We've got characters like Marina, who comes from a long line of swimmers. Mm. We've got the guy who wants to be in the priesthood. <laughs> and we've also got... Uh, who is your idea, Andrew? The PR, the PR the child. The PR <laughs> guru. Adam's idea, we've got Try Hard, which is a very bright kid called Billy. He's so bright, he's the cleverest of the borough. He's so clever that in his A-levels he got a zero because he answered too well. He ends there up going to are. Oxford through clearing to do rugby, <laughs> which is a nightmare. He meets Brag Leg, played by Arnie Hammer, who bullies him immediately. But then he remembers he's got a twin brother called John. This is all in the first 10 minutes or so. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, his twin brother is very good at rugby, gets into the final, but then the twin brother's injured he has to do it himself but does he turns out same person same person <laughs> does win the rugby but then goes to a psychiatric hospital <laughs> yeah yeah there we go great and andrew's Both. idea a bunch <laughs> of squares which is zane the main character a 12 to 14 year old who's unbelievably good at boxing but for undisclosed reasons is banned from boxing but not 
chess boxing. So to get his dad out of prison, he needs 150K to pay for a lawyer. <laughs> and after several uh, triumphs, including against Piotr, he decides to spend the money, not on getting his dad out of prison, but setting up a, uh, a fund or a school for teaching underprivileged kids chess. Which do we think best fits the category? I think I think off games is the, definitely the most feel good. I was feeling the best after that description. I I I, I like I like that I kind of relate to it, but I really find it quite dark how George is missing out what happens on this wall. <laughs> like we don't know what we're signing off. So I'm saying logistically, yeah, that could be quite hard. Kids in the woods, but kid boxing though, <laughs> you could film that anywhere. And what about uh, Adam's idea, the uh, try hard? Well, purely for me, because of the dark psychotic twist at the end, I just am worried that it doesn't fit into the category. I love it. <gasps> I do. I do think that the the message at the end of try hard is that it's not it's not <laughs> shameful to seek help if you realise you need it. <laughs> and you I don't. Your twin's not there. Right. Yeah. But actually, I do think that that could be a feel good. Yeah, message. that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's no, that's I was, fair. I, I apologise. I wasn't going to tell you this. In Try Harder, it turns out there was a twin. <laughs> <laughs> and he's being taken for a right ride by the twin. The twin just thought this will be so funny. Um, but also dark. Yeah. It was like an inheritance yeah. situation. Mm. You know, I won't talk well, about that it. could be ages 11 to 13. And yeah. It's true. a little bit edgier. But I mean, the third one, there, there was no twin. Very, very, very <laughs> sad. Very All right, sad. the Try Hard trilogy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, so let's have a vote. Georgia, which idea do you reckon? I'm going to have to vote for chess boxing. Chess boxing. Mm. What do you reckon, Adam? Myself, definitely myself. Pick a, pick a oh, side. Fine. Pick a side. Yeah, yes. uh, yeah I like George. Yeah. I was one of the ugly fine, kids. Okay. So we've got chess boxing. We've got uh, what have we got here? We've got uh, off games. So one for off games, one for chess boxing. It's off games for me as well. It's oh, off games. Off yeah. games takes it. Georgia, your amazing Fantastic. idea has won the day once Fantastic. again. Well done, guys. Everyone did a great job. This episode of Because You Watch featured Georgia Maguire, Adam Hess, Andrew Hunter-Murray, and me, Rory Binks. It was produced by Joe Grace and Martin Tricky.